The Federal Reserve is widely expected to keep U.S. interest rates on hold on Wednesday. Focus will be on changes to the FOMC's economic projections and the dot plot. Joining me to discuss is Mark Ostwald, global strategist at ADM ISI. Mark, thanks for coming in. Let's start with the economic projections. What are your forecasts? Um, I'm, I, I think we're, everybody's basically looking for the idea that they're going to have to reduce their GDP forecast for 2019. It was 2.3 last time. Something like 2% seems reasonable. Um, so it's still actually a, a reasonable rate, better than we, we saw for much of the past 10 years, but obviously not as good as last year. But given we've got a soft start to 2019, uh, it's going to be really difficult to get a lot better than that. Uh, same sort of thing applies to the headline PCE deflator. The, the big drag down from oil prices is probably going to keep uh, the, the average headline PCE deflator well below the 2% target. But... More importantly for the Fed, actually, the core PCE deflator should still be around target, and they'll probably maintain targets for their targets for that. The key then is going to be what they do with the unemployment rate forecast. They're still looking at very low unemployment rate. There's no real reason for them to start revising uh, revising the, the labor data negatively. So that's something which obviously has an impact on where they see the dot plot. And it's uh, as much as the market's now, I think, discounting something like a one in three chance of a rate cut by the end of the year. If the labor market remains as tight as they are projecting, then really they can't afford to completely price out the chance of at least one more rate hike um, at least this year and perhaps one next year. Much will depend on what they do with the longer run um, rate. And that uh, really then depends on what their assessment of where the neutral rate is at current point in time. Uh, previously, um, when they, they revised it down in December to two and three quarters to three percent from three to three and a quarter, Mr. Williams, who is one of the big Think, thinkers on the FOMC has suggested the current uh, Fed funds target of two and a quarter to two and a half is probably the new normal, as he called it, for the neutral rate. If they were to revise it that down that far, then obviously I think uh, that would be seen as a very, very dovish signal, even if it does imply, obviously, that there's going to be problems further ahead if the US hits a downturn and the Fed doesn't actually have much in the way of interest rate ammunition because really to cut from two and a quarter down to back to where they were is not going to give a lot of stimulus. So do you think the Fed was right to take a pause on further hikes earlier in the year? Um, I think it was. I don't think it made a particularly um, good fist, as they say, of its communications in the December-January period. It was such a strong about turn. Um, I think it really underlines, um, and this is a point which uh, they don't like to highlight too much because they have a dual inflation employment mandate, but it is all down to financial conditions. And we got to a stage where financial conditions were tightening so much last year, in no small part due to their quantitative tightening program, um, i.e. balance sheet reduction, um, that they were concerned that with credit spreads ballooning out, volatility increasing and long-term interest rates increasing, there was something which out there which was going to start to throttle the economy. The only problem is, of course, is it did look a little bit like kowtowing to pressure from Mr Trump. So what's your outlook for the US dollar? Because we've seen a bit of pressure in recent sessions, but broadly the trend is a positive one. Um, it's interesting, given the fact that the Fed has now taken its foot off the pedal, that the dollar does continue broadly to move higher. Yes, I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, the foreign exchange market on the majors this year has been incredibly dull, very, very <laughs> tight ranges, um, yeah, with the exclusion, obviously, of cable, which is something very specific. But if you look at dollar, euro, dollar, yen, uh, it's not exactly been exciting. Um, I, th I think really the outlook for the dollar as ever, particularly against the euro and the yen, is always down to... Um, rate differentials, particularly 10-year rate differentials. And with US Treasury yields coming down as sharply as they have from 3.1 uh, before we started uh, to turn up at the end of last year um, to uh, 2.6, sub 2.6 late on Friday, um, the pressure is on the dollar because the other rates, as much as Bund and JGB yields have fallen, they've not fallen nearly as much as the US ones. And then the carry into the dollars 
becomes less attractive and less convincing. The other point, obviously, with that is that um, in a situation where US long-term yields are falling, that's generally seen as a positive for emerging market currencies. The opposite was obviously the case last year. And so you see with, with the financial repression of very, very low uh, US Treasury yields, people then have to start to hunt around for better returns. And obviously one of the first places they look at is both equities, they look at credit, and they look at EM. And so in that, in turn, that obviously is a dollar negative because there's more money flowing out. The only problem with it, obviously, is we are in, a, in a, an environment where global trade uh, volumes are contracting. And generally, uh, an, an environment where global trade volumes are contracting means there's less of a dollar surplus around in the world. Um, and that's generally going to be quite dollar supportive. So as much as that rate differential probably undermines the dollar a bit in the short term, and would obviously turn it, it would, that would turn around if the dollar, if we stole, uh, saw some signals from the Fed later in the year that they are still minded to raise rates, uh, that would turn it around. But in the very short term, <clears throat> um, we, we basically don't have the sort of natural support from excess dollars being recycled elsewhere. What about US equities? How much more room to run do you think there is? Um, a lot of it, as I sort of implied, really boils down to what happens with US Treasury yields and indeed with credit spreads. Credit spreads have had a, an enormous rally, um, and that particularly high yield and indeed um, investment grade. Uh, that's generally a positive for equity, simply because if you get the spreads down to the sort of levels that we've got at the moment, then the inevitable thought is, well, I'm not going, I haven't got much upside mileage in credit. There's certainly nothing to be gained in terms of the investment returns on US Treasuries. So why shouldn't, shouldn't I invest in equities? It's a sort of, it is, um, it's not a fear of missing out. It's a, it's a TINA or there is no alternative type trade. Um, it does change, obviously, if we start to see um, the Fed change its narrative. But for the time being, that that's probably not going to be happening at least till the second half of the year. Mark, thank you so much for your time. That was Mark Oswald, Global Strategist at AGM ISI. I'm Victoria Scholar and thank you for watching IGTV. We'll see you soon.